This is Nationwide on the network service of the NTA. It's good to have you join us. Good afternoon and welcome. I'm Hawa Saliku Adama. Federal plans have been finalized by the federal government towards the establishment of cottage industries in the 774 local government areas of the country to enhance economic well-being and job creation. The Minister of Special Duties and Intergovernmental Affairs, George Akume, announced this while briefing newsmen after presenting his school card to the Federal Executive Council. State House correspondent Adam Musambo reports that the Minister of Foreign Affairs, Jeffrey Onyema, also gave account of his stewardship. The presentation of school cards by members of the Federal Cabinet was initiated by President Muhammad Buhari to not only assess their performances, but also the level of implementation of his administration's next level agenda. The Minister of Special Duties, George Akume, who took his turn this Wednesday, spoke at length on the various initiatives being pursued towards supporting efforts at lifting 100 million Nigerians out of poverty in 10 years. As every local government will have one industry, and uh, this is based on industrial corridors. And uh, we believe at the end of the day, this is capable of employing over 200 uh, uh, people per, uh, per cottage industry. This is not small industries as such, but we call them cottage. And uh, when you multiply that by 774 local governments, you know the number of people that will be uh, given uh, uh, employment. Arrangements, he also said, have been completed for the procurement of decent commuter vehicles for intra and interstate transport services while consultations are ongoing towards actualizing the mass production of modern cooking stoves in the country to put a stop to indiscriminate felling of trees and desertification. It's very important that we do this because there are opportunities we can have uh, from the World Bank. When we're talking about millions of stoves, over 10 million. And you see that when it is being assembled or manufactured here, the number of people who will get employment, who will have this employment opportunity, opportunities, uh, the number is going to be quite high. We are looking at over uh, six to seven million people. And uh, we have started a scheme whereby through the utilization of dams for the purpose of irrigation and uh, power generation, uh, we should be able to advance the course of agriculture uh, in the country. Foreign Affairs Minister Geoffrey Onyama also briefed the Council on his accomplishments in furtherance of the vision and aspirations of President Muhammad Buhari. For instance, with regards to changing the foreign policy direction uh, of the country, we need to have a meeting, an all-Nigerian meeting uh, of stakeholders uh, to look at uh, our, our foreign policy and uh, to review our foreign policy and to see in which direction uh, it should be going. So we have started um, in that process of, uh, of organizing this so that our foreign policy can reflect the realities of today and, uh, and the realities of Nigeria's uh, uh, interest, national interest. Nigeria, he said, has also achieved a lot in placing her citizens in key positions globally thereby giving the country some strategic leverage. Also, yeah, um, you know, there's a green initiative that um, we're launching. It's an agricultural initiative with the uh, Brazilian uh, government, um, over $1.1 billion uh, initiative, uh, in which would also help to create uh, jobs uh, in, this, uh, in this country and uh, especially youth, um, you know, uh, employment. Nigerian diplomatic initiative the minister explained has also been launched as a one-stop shop for business matching between Nigerians and potential foreign partners, access international markets, as well as attract foreign direct investment. From the State House, Adam Musambu, NTA News. The office of the vice president has described as false and a baseless fabrication. The allegation is seen in a series of tweets and online publications credited to one Jackson Ude, 
claiming that the vice president collected a sum of 4 billion naira from the embattled former chairman of the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission and that the vice president gave instructions to Mago to release some of the recovered loots. A release by the senior special assistant to the president on media and publicity, office of the vice president, Lao Lua Konde, dismisses the allegations as completely absurd saying such mindless, vicious, and reckless publications have now become the preferred tools of unscrupulous and reprobate elements procured with monetary inducement to peddle blatant falsehoods to tarnish the image of upright public officials and mislead unsuspecting Nigerians. The senior special assistant says, the vice president is not distracted by these obvious campaigns of lies stressing that the online publications being criminally defamatory in nature have been preferred to the have been referred rather to the relevant law enforcement agencies for investigation and necessary action similarly minister of state for petroleum resources timipri silva has cleared the air on misconceptions about federal government's deregulation policy on the downstream subsector and the subsequent price modulation of petrol. Over now to Mie Ogide. It is an 11th paragraph note, authored by the Minister of State for Petroleum Resources, Timmy Press Silva, separating the facts from fiction on the federal government policy on the deregulation and the monthly price modulation of petrol. For the Petroleum Ministry, deregulating the downstream subsector is for the government not to be the sole supplier of petrol, but also to encourage private sector to take over the role of supply of petroleum products. This means market forces of demand and supply dictate the prices at the pump, while the role of the government can be likened to that of a referee in the football match, whose responsibility is to ensure that the game is played according to the rules and regulations, and to protect the customer from arbitrary prices. Petroleum products are refined from crude oil. Therefore, the price of crude for the refining process will affect the price of the refined product. When crude oil prices were down, government, through its regulatory functions, ensured that the benefits of lower crude oil prices were enjoyed by Nigerians by ensuring that PMS was lowered. At that time, the federal government indicated that increase in crude oil prices will also reflect at the pump. This is a necessary action taken by a responsible government in the overall interest of Nigerians. Indeed, one of the reasons the government was unable to attract the level of investment desired into the refining sector has been the burden of fuel subsidy. We need to free up that investment space so that what happened in the banking sector aviation sector and other sectors can happen in the mid and downstream oil sector. We can no longer avoid the inevitable and expect the impossible to continue. There was no time government promised to reduce pump price and keep it permanently low, the minister added. For the petroleum ministry, the perceived accusations leveled against the federal government on increase in petrol is the antics of unscrupulous middlemen who would want the status quo to remain at the expense of the generality of Nigerians. As the federal government bids farewell to fuel subsidy and warmly welcomes deregulation, the Minister of State Petroleum Resources, Timipra Silva, is optimistic that more jobs in the often and investments will be attracted because trillions of Naira will be freed up to develop infrastructure instead of enriching a few. Bearing in mind the likely impact higher petrol prices will have on Nigerians, the federal government is working to roll out auto gas scheme which will provide Nigerians with alternative sources of fuel and at a lower cost, the Minister of Petroleum promised. Mie Ogidi, NT News. And it's time to join Hingino in our Lagos Network Center for more reports. Good afternoon to you. Hello, how are we begin here with the education sector. Educationists have commended the proactive step 
taken by the federal government to suspend participation of Nigerian students in the 2020 West African Senior School Certificate Examination with the view to curbing the spread of coronavirus in the country. Just a few days ago, Prospective West African Senior School Certificate Examination candidates were greeted by news of their resumption slated for 4th August to 5th September 2020. The Presidential Task Force on COVID-19 made the decision to enable those in terminal classes write their examinations. The candidates were excited as their fears of losing a session were allayed. But after taking a second look at the decision, it was quickly reverted, and the Minister of Education, Adamu Adamu, announced that all schools under his ministry will not write the examinations because it is not yet safe for students to return to school. Hearing that we are not going to write WAEC this year, that we're going to lose an academic year, is, is saddening. And then now we find out that we might have to wait till next year to maybe even repeat our class. And it's really, really sad, it's really discouraging. Some parents, however, have different views from the candidates. The government is not totally wrong to say that uh, WAIC cannot commence now. Because if you look at issues in time, you see that we have not been able to combat the COVID-19. The life of those young ones are very, very important. Because the students and the pupils, they are the most vulnerable government is finding a lasting solution to COVID-19 pandemic, the expectation is that the people will cooperate with government to stop the spread so that life can fully return to all sectors. Now away from education, in an attempt to flatten the curve and stop the spread of COVID-19, face masks have become a norm the world over. And just as people were adjusting to the discomfort of the face mask, another piece of facial protective gear is gaining acceptance. Imole Ayotokede reports on the new alternative. Individuals are enjoined to wear a face mask a requirement to protect themselves and others in public from coronavirus. This necessity is also to prevent community spread of these virus that attacks the respiratory system and other organs of the human body. However, another protective gear for the face is now widely used. It is a transparent face shield, the clear film of plastic worn around the head with the aid of a band. As the name implies, it shows the entire face extending below the chin. The designs vary as some face shields come with frames like regular spectacles. I observed that to be doubly protected, some of the wearers simultaneously adorn the face mask with the shield in place. I can talk to you, but those masks, I will remove it before I talk to you. This one, free. Nonetheless, most respondents would rather stick with the face mask. Because air can pass through under, but this one is more preventing than, than class. The cost of face shields depend on the durability. They are priced between 500 and 3,000 naira, making it more expensive than face mask. I bought at the rate of 800 per dozen. So I sell at the rate of 100 naira. I started selling at 500 naira. Now it's, it, it's gone up to 1.5 because um, the cost of production is higher. I had to employ people. Then it was just me. Medical experts endorse the face shields as an effective personal protective equipment. Those who are taking care of patients who have COVID-19 at home, okay? Those are the people on um, private hospital. Those are the people who need vaccine. But it is not of any disadvantage for private people to use it, especially if you are around the crowd. Because what you want to prevent is for droplets to get into your mouth or eyes or noses. From the look of things, the face shield may soon replace the face mask because breathing while wearing it is without the challenges of discomfort caused by inadequate oxygen following prolonged use of the face mask. In Lagos, Imoli Ayotokede, NTN News. 
And now the Lagos State Emergency Management Agency has reacted to a viral video concerning a whitish substance which was spotted in some, on some streets in the Anthony village. Dotun Oguemi has an update. Social media users in Nigeria were this Wednesday shocked by this widely circulated video with a lot of chatter on the possibility of snowfall in some parts of Lagos. While this was not the case, concerns, however, raised about the environmental effect of the chemical substance, which lasted several hours on road surface, was addressed by the Lagos State Emergency Management Agency. It was due to basically um, our operations that um, occurred while a, an articulated vehicle was um, involved in a loan accident. The articulated vehicle was containing 20 feet, double 20 feet container, and the contents of the container spilled on the uh, on the road. We blanketed the, 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 the oil that spilled on, on, on the road, and then, and that uh, that led to the foam um, that they were seen on the streets. The agency further confirmed that no resident was trapped in their homes in Lagos. Dotson Ugunyemi, NCA News. And that's it from Lagos. We now take a break. Nationwide continues after that. I wish to once again commend the frontline workers across the country who, on a daily basis, risk everything to ensure we win this fight. For those who got infected in the line of duty, rest assured that government will do all it takes to support you and your families during this exceedingly difficult period. I will also take this opportunity to assure you all that your safety, well-being, and welfare remains paramount to our government. I am using this opportunity to express our deepest condolences to the families of all Nigerians that have lost their loved ones as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic. This is our collective loss and we share your grief. like this, the coronavirus is spreading so fast. The use of face masks has become very vital. Vital, vital. More importantly, for the elderly in the society whom their immune system is not strong enough to fight the disease. If you must go out, use a face mask. It is not comfortable, but it is necessary. Wear your mask, I wear my mask. So much to do, but stay at home for your own safety. Make an extra washable mask and share with your neighbor. Everyone should use a face mask once you leave home to be safe from the coronavirus, especially the elderly persons in our society. Protect me, I'll protect you. This message was brought to you by the Coalition of Societies for the Right of Older Persons in Nigeria, cost wrapping, in collaboration with the National Orientation Agency, NOA. ...of corruption to ICPC on toll-free number 0800 This message message is brought to you by ICPC and NTA. Okay guys, uh, let's do this. Action. You can deceive everyone, but you certainly cannot deceive me. I see you. But if the package is faulty, there'll be no bias. So I suggest you sit down and have a talk with your husband. So you have faith. Mm. Everything is possible. You heard it, right? You needed help and I helped you. This place will do so. The doors will work. You mean you still work for Matthew Osage? What? Thanks for rejoining us. Security Matters Now. Latest reports on Operation Hader in Daji. Under the subsidiary Operation Accord, indicate that the troops are gaining the upper hand in the ongoing crusade against banditry. A statement by the Coordinator of Defense Media Operations, Major General John Enenche, clarified that three bandits were neutralized and one arrested during a clearance operation that spanned across Casina, 
Zamfara and Sokoto states. Major General Enenche noted that two bandits were killed at Sabon Berni in Sokoto, while the other one met his Waterloo in Faskari, Kasina state. More than 75 Boko Haram terrorists have been neutralized in ongoing military operations in the country. Defense correspondent Najatu Tijani has more. For the period under review, ground, air, and marine troops intercepted various criminal and terrorist acts, including cattle rustling and arms recovery. Island troops also rescued some hostages with some criminal elements surrendering to them. Within the period, the ground troops of Operation Lafayette had no fewer than 17 encounters with the BHT and ISWAP criminals in the Northeast Theater of Operation. These encounters resulted in the killing of 75 BHT and ISWAP fighters, the capture of large arms and ammunition, as well as vehicles and equipment. Also recorded were the capture of some criminal elements and spies, as well as the rescue of 35 BHT captives, while four of their fighters surrendered to us. The Directorate of Defense Media Operations also says peace is gradually returning to troubled locations and farmers are returning to their farms as a result of troops patrolling the hinterlands to deny armed herdsmen, rustlers and other criminals freedom of action. Najaa Tijani, NTA News. And Abu Bakar in our Meduguri studio will now bring us the next set of stories. It's over to you. That's true, Hawa. Good afternoon to you. Residents of Shauri North 1 and 2 of Meduguri Metropolis have benefited from a donation of COVID-19 items to cope community transmission of coronavirus pandemic. The donation, which came from non-governmental organizations, also saw to the empowerment of 50 vulnerable women who were victims of insurgency with cash assistance of 35,000 naira each. Memuna Garba reports. Worried with the increasing cases of coronavirus pandemic and Lamin Foundation for Peace and Development in collaboration with Open Society Foundations deemed it necessary to sensitize people, especially those at the grassroots, on the need to continue to adhere to all the safety protocols against the pandemic and donated protective items to enable residents maintain hygiene at all times. To this end, the benefiting communities were appreciative of the support and are sure to sustain all the safety measures against COVID-19. We are always cautious enough for the sanitation of our self and the environs. The Alamin Foundation for Peace and Development further empowered 50 vulnerable women of Jure Dole Victims and Relations Network affected by insurgency with 35,000 naira each to enable them venture into businesses to earn a living in addition to provision of protective items. Before we are so funny, we now got a citizen. We know what to do with it. Founder Alamin Foundation, Hamsatu Alamin said, the fund was given to them after the women have undergone training on various skills and regained self-esteem from the trauma of insurgency. About 580 of them we have made intervention. They have all been given this kind of cash support. Hamsatu Alamin further cautioned the beneficiaries to properly use the fund to enhance their livelihood. In my degree, Mayimuna Garba, Acting General Officer, Commanding 7th Division, Nigerian Army, and Commander Sector 1, Operation Lafia Doli, Brigadier General Abdul Khalifa Ibrahim, has assured of his troops' untiring efforts to root remnants of insurgents in their areas of responsibilities and restore lasting peace. The acting GOC gave the assurance during a reception in honor of troops of Sector 1 and 2, Operation Lafia Doli, for the successes recorded in Kantana Jimlan operation recently. Here again is Memuna Garwa with more details of the story. As part of efforts to show appreciation over the troops' gallantry, a reception was organized by the acting GOC 7th Division to honor them and boost their morale to continue with the onslaught against the terrorists. Acting GOC 7th Division and Commander Sector 1 Operation Lafia Doli, Brigadier General Abdul Khalifa Ibrahim, attributed the tremendous successes recorded by the troops in Operation Pantana Jimlan in the Timbuktu Triangle to troops' high morale to end the insurgency and lots of equipment received from the Army headquarters that enhanced their fighting spirit. While commending the Army headquarters for the support, 
the GOC further appealed for more troops and modern equipment to enable them to sustain the offensive. Brigadier General Abdul Khalifa Ibrahim urged the troops to be more committed in defeating the insurgent for development to continue. I expect them to be more determined. I expect them to be more dedicated. What we did here is to make them relax. We are not really satisfied with where we are. We still have a destination that we are, you know, hoping to reach. And we are working hard to reach that destination. There was a guided tour to tents of the troops where pleasantries were extended to them by the GOC in company of other generals as well as cultural dances and other forms of entertainment featured at the event. In Maiduguri, Mumina Garba, MTA News. And that will be it from Maiduguri. Hawa in Abuja has more stories for us on Nationwide. Hawa? Sure, Abubakar. Many thanks. Zamfara State Police Command has arrested one of the suspected killers of a consultant gynecologist, late Dr. Enoch Opara of the Federal Medical Center, Gusu, who was recently murdered in his house situated in the Gusu metropolis. Zamfara State Commissioner of Police, Usman Nagago, who paraded the suspect, says the command will continue the manhunt for the other alleged perpetrators of the heinous act. Salamatul Umar Abdullahi has more. A consultant gynecologist of the Federal Medical Center, who so late Dr. Enoch Opara, was said to have been murdered and the cops banned by unknown assailants in June 2020. The situation became worrisome to colleagues of the deceased and the public. Commissioner of Police and First State Usman Nagogu said his men arrested a middle aged man, Abu Bakr Namalika, at Lalan area in Guso on their way to kidnap one of their targets. In the course of interrogation, the hoodlum confessed that he was one of the suspects. They were given specific instructions to go and get money from the doctor at all costs. On, on the event that the doctor is not or is not in possession of any money, they should take off his life. The manner of taking the life leave most to be deserved. The suspect confessed to have also killed seven other people at different locations in Zamfara State. <laughs> The medical director of Federal Medical Center, we saw Dr. Bello Muhammad, applauded the effort of the Nigerian police, saying it will go a long way in restoring the hopes of professional colleagues. Uh, we feel that uh, we are covered. We feel that the security are doing their job. Uh, this is very fantastic and this is very interesting. CP of Suman Nagogo assured that he will do everything possible to fish out the rest of the perpetrators of the inhuman act and bring them to book. From Guso, Salamat Umar Abdullahi, NTA News. Meanwhile, the headquarters of the newly created Nigeria Police Zone 13 has been inaugurated at Upo in Dunukofia, local government area of Anambra State. Uchenna Wokoyo reports that the Inspector General of Police on the occasion reiterated the commitment of the police to the security of lives and property within the southeast zone. Anambra and Enugu, formerly under Nigeria Police Zone 9, and Ebonyi, formerly under Nigeria Police Zone 6, now make up the new Zone 13 with headquarters at Ukbo in Dunukofia, local government area of Anambra State. Inspector General of Police, represented by the DIG in charge of the Southeast, Celestino Koye, said the new zone is to better secure the Southeast and also reduce the difficulty in reaching police high command in resolution of disputes. Within yes. Ebony, Enugu and Anambra, we have less crimes so, compared to many other states in the country. So, and I believe that with the present position of Zone 13, crime rate within the zone will be well controlled. The donor of the temporary site for the takeoff of the zone and an elder statesman, Prince Atoeze, appreciated President Muhammad Buhari for his commitment to security and other developmental projects within the Southeast Zone. It's not the type of leader we want in Nigeria. A, a leader who, uh, who doesn't think about east or west or north and, or north and south. Buhari. Give us a Niger bridge without wasting time. The new Zone 13 is headed by an assistant inspector general of police. From Upo in Dunukofia local government area, Uchen Nawekoyo, NTA News. 
And it's time to join Diba Barry in our Port Harcourt studios for more reports. It's over to you. Good afternoon, how and welcome to Port Harcourt. The authorities at the Port Harcourt International Airport are putting finishing touches preparatory to the resumption of flight operations at the domestic wing of the airport. Kingsley Amadji reports. The atmosphere at the domestic wing of the airport remains calm, but for few artisans affecting the new COVID-19 protocols, amidst the preparations, there are calls from stakeholders for the authorities to go beyond the non-pharmaceutical protocols to certify that the carriers are in optimum conditions, given that they have been granted for months. We should apply to the rules and the regulation that will be introduced to all the passengers. We, we don't really need somebody to come and guide us. It's a very simple instruction. The Federal Airport Authority has told NTA News that there have been a number of engagements with relevant stakeholders towards complying with the new requirements. To our customers, the passengers, stakeholders, I'm telling them the stage of our preparedness, that uh, we are hungry to receive them in, in the terminal and to tell them that the terminal is safe, the terminal is secure. The part of the protocols established by the Federal Airport Authority is uh, the restriction of uh, non-travelers uh, gaining entrance beyond this uh, uh, point. The, the essence, according to the authorities, is to limit the number of persons that enter into the main terminal building uh, as part of the physical distancing protocol. Expectedly, the reopening of domestic flights comes with a number of economic gains for the states. Keen watchers, however, want state authorities to also rise up to the occasion by providing the leadership in the management of any possible COVID-19 related incidents, especially from air travelers, given the implication on the health of the citizens. In Port Harcourt, Kingsley Amajuri, NTA News. In the face of rising COVID-19 infections and risk to public health, Governor Yeso Miki has asked residents to follow the established guidelines on burials and weddings with maximum number of 50 persons in attendance. This is to ensure social distancing towards checking the spread of coronavirus. Ogedi Equi reports. To sustain the progress made in the containment of the virus, the State Security Council imposed a dock to dawn curfew from 8 p.m. to 6 a.m. on Boni local government area and One community in Eleme local government area from 10th July until further notice. Governor Wike reiterated his administration's commitment to flatten the curve of the virus in the state. We have also noticed that most affected people are resorting to self-medication instead of presenting themselves for appropriate medical attention and treatment at the state's treatment centers. Therefore, those who experience any, some or all of the disease symptoms or suspect, they may have been in contact with an affected person, need not wait for a moment to present themselves for testing and appropriate treatment at the expense of the state government. He noted that the state is prospecting the reopening of markets as soon as it is certified safe with the appropriate protocols. In Port Harcourt, Oge Dinyekwe, NTA News. And as our bit from here is back to Hawa for the rest of the news. Good evening. Thanks, Diba Barry. We still have one more network center to go to today for more reports on Nationwide, but that will be after these messages. The number of the COVID-19 cases in Nigeria is increasing daily with many more tests ongoing. The battle of testing, isolating, treating, and attending to the affected persons rests heavily on the shoulders of our health workers, constantly putting their lives on the line and at risk to contain this virus, save and protect the lives of millions of Nigerians. To these health workers, we at the Nigerian Television Authority NTA, on behalf of millions of Nigerians, say a big thank you for all that you have done and are doing. To the security agencies enforcing the lockdown and every other frontliner, we say thank you for putting your lives on the line to save ours. 
There is no amount of words that can quantify our gratitude. Thank you. This message is brought to you by the Nigerian Television Authority, NTA, Africa's largest television network. Welcome, Jeff. Have you washed your hands? You inside my house again. This is not the key black man. Ah! I don't know if it's misinformation or poor hygiene that will kill you first. Coronavirus is real. And good hygiene practice will save your life. Oh. Anyway, no hand washing, no eating. I will not take care of it. That's what I say. is real and it's on the rise but you can help yourself and help others to be safe remember we can stop the spread to your hands this message is from the Akin Fateh Foundation in partnership with the National Orientation Agency with support from MacArthur Foundation Indians, let us take responsibility stay healthy stay safe and curb the spread of the virus take responsibility the coronavirus spreads from one person to another let us avoid crowd gathering of any kind for any reason take responsibility avoid traveling from one state to another during these lockdown restrictions obey all the rules that are put in place take responsibility stop spreading fake news and unverified reports about the coronavirus there is no known cure for covid 19. take responsibility observe all the measures that can help stop the spread of the virus together we can do this but only if we take responsibility. This message is brought to you by the Nigerian Television Authority, NTA, Africa's largest television network. Chabi, you still come back to this house? Yeah. So you cannot even support your husband? Eh? Support who? You said men are the head of the family. How to get here? Oh no, oh no, how to get here? Feminism is all about equal rights and opportunity for women. Settle your matter in your home. You can't keep comparing Agatha and Uchechi. Agatha is Agatha. Uchechi is Uchechi. And it's still nationwide on the network service of the NTA. Mina in Enugu is next. Hello, how are you? Good evening and welcome to Enugu. A class 16 military load capacity belly bridge constructed by the Enugu state government linking several communities in Amechi, Obago, Enugu South local government area of the state has been inaugurated. The project handled by the 82 Division Nigerian Army Engineers was described as a dream come true by a former governor of the old Anambra State, Senator Jim Ifai Chukumobudu, an indigene of the area. Susan Aze completes the report. The steel bridge across Nyama Rivers is a welcome relief to the people who have had to travel long distances to access the city expressing his gratitude to Governor Ugwani for conceiving the idea without prompting. Senator Jim Mobudu, an indigenous of Amechi, said the long-held dream of his people has finally been actualized. I thank you, Governor, for this honor you done to me. I thank you for hearing my tears. God bless you. Targeting the economic opportunities in the rural communities, Governor Ugwani is confident that the project will stimulate commerce and economic growth in the area. This project dovetails into the integrated rural development agenda of our administration, enhancing connectivity and access to homes, businesses, communities, as well as stimulating commerce. The governor also appreciated the quality of work done by the army engineers, noting that the army's rich history of competency in delivery of resilient ballet bridges prompted the decision to award the contract to the military. The project engineer, Brigadier General Samuel Beatrice, while explaining the project specifications, 
appreciated the Enugu State Government for partnering the Nigerian Army in its development agenda. General Officer Commanding 82 Division, Major General Lassisi Adeboye, and other dignitaries from the area witnessed the inauguration of the bridge. In Enugu, Susan Eze, NTA News. Wildlife, if well harnessed, is capable of boosting the nation's economy, particularly with government's effort towards post-COVID-19 recovery. Kinsley Ananiwo in this report takes a look at the need to preserve endangered species. Wildlife is known to serve various purposes, especially in the area of promotion of tourism. Many countries of the world, including Africa, are known to generate huge revenue from this, going by its economic value. Over the years, however, wildlife has been under attack, judging from the fact that animals serve as good sources of protein, while the byproducts of some of them serve as raw materials for industrial use. As the world, including Nigeria, looks towards post-COVID-19 survival after the huge losses resulting from the pandemic, experts say the government can actually tap into opportunities available in the wildlife sector. They are of the opinion that to reap economic benefits of wildlife, government must devise means of ending indiscriminate killings of endangered species through implementation of existing enabling laws. The benefits from wildlife conservation in aspect of education and research, like some of these pandemic the coronavirus and all the sort you, you are talking about. You can see the remedy from them. It's coming from other beings. Other call for measures to end such as capable of jeopardizing the economic benefits inherent in the sector. It's really unfortunate that people will know that there are laws protecting these animals and they will decide to go contrary to the law. Let there be an urgent reawakening and create awareness and bring perpetrators to book. We don't need to keep protected animals because it is prohibited. In Owari, King Silonaniwu, NTA News. And that does it from here. It's over to you, Hawa, for the rest of Nationwide. Sure, Mina. And moving on, 12 suspected drug traffickers in possession of more than 1,381 kilograms of cannabis sativa and other psychotropic substances have been arrested by officers of the National Drug Law Enforcement Agency, NDLEA, Niger State Command. Acting State Commander, NDLEA, Isaac Oludari, says most of the seized illicit drugs were transported through waybill and courier service. Husaida Musa reports. The assorted illicit drugs seized by the Niger State Command of the National Drug Law Enforcement Agency, NDLEA, include 1,381.5 kilograms cannabis sativa, 29 pinches of cocaine, 401 bottles of cough syrup with codeine, 10,200 ampoules pentazosin injection, and one wrap of methamphetamine. The illicit drugs seized from the 12 suspects arrested in different parts of the state were concealed in unsuspecting manner and transported through waybills and vans to their various destinations. One of the drugs, the motorboy that make you help me, make you attach me for a car, is that he say he can't possible. The only help he can do for me is that he can give me Arizona 3 that make a drug for somebody for Abuja and they give me a number. My friend sent me to collect waybills for them. Then I didn't know the content of the web bill. The acting commander, NDLEA, Isaac Aloy Oludari, sees six suspects out of the 12 arrested have been charged to court, three convicted, and another three taken to the rehabilitation center. We are making every effort to make sure that we intercept these drugs, how they are coming, before they get to their destination. We follow up to their destination to pick the receiver. The command sees investigations are still ongoing on the involvement of the remaining six suspects still in the custody of the state NDLEA command. In Mena, Hussein Musa, NT News. Now to the latest on COVID-19. 
The National Center for Disease Control has announced 460 new cases of COVID-19 infections in Nigeria. The new cases are in 21 states and the breakdown shows that Lagos has 150 cases, Rivers 49, Oyo 43, Delta 38, Federal Capital Territory 26, Anambra and Kanu 20 each, Plateau 18, Edo 14, Bayelsa and Enugu 13. Orders are Oshun with 12 cases, Kwara 10, Bornu 8, Ogun 7, Kaduna 6, Imo 4, Bochi and Gombe 3, H, Niger 2, while Adoma has one case. This puts the number of confirmed positive cases to 30,249 as at Wednesday, the 8th of July. Total discharge figures stand at 12,373 with 684 deaths. Meanwhile, Nigeria's efforts at developing solutions to the challenge of non-availability and high cost of COVID-19 diagnostic kits have paid off with the development of the RNA SWIFT test kit. This is an indigenous invention and a product of biotechnology designed, developed and validated to hold huge potential for Nigeria's plan to scale up testing for COVID-19. Justin Bem Uyu has more. A record surge of COVID-19 in Africa, which now surpasses half a million, is perceived by the African Center for Disease Control as a far cry from the actual numbers following poor testing capacity of many countries on the continent. And this is the biggest challenge with COVID-19 management in these emerging economies where there has been inability to carry out sufficient testing for the disease due to cost and non-availability of test kits. Nigeria has come forward with a groundbreaking solution following a scientific collaboration between National Biotechnology Development Agency, Nigeria Center for Disease Control, Nigeria Institute for Medical Research and the technical support team at the University of Sheffield to invent a homemade diagnostic kit for COVID-19 that is affordable and very sensitive called RNA SWIFT. RNA SWIFT will reshape our testing approach and bring the power of large scale and precise testing closer to the people than it has ever been. The invention was born out of the request from the Federal Ministry of Agriculture and Rural Development to test 5 million Nigerian farmers and farm laborers to ensure that the food security chain is not compromised by COVID-19. The farming population generally in this country is between the ages of 15 and 45. And these ages are a little bit more resistant to this or the effect of covid is a bit less, not like us, all the people who are over 70. So that is helping us. But that is not enough. And that is why this important project is very good for us. This is Nigeria's gift to Africa. This is Nigeria's gift to the world. RNA Swift is an invention that excites as its scientific accuracy and commercial affordability has attracted the attention of the African Development Bank. The bank is now discussing with the innovators for a large scale testing under a new program tagged Testing Africa Initiative. In Abuja, Justin Bemunyi, NT News. And Community transmission, denial, stigmatization, as well as lack of adherence to safety measures have all been blamed for the daily increase of confirmed cases of COVID-19 across states in the country. These were some of the submissions of guests on NTA's program, Good Morning Nigeria, while discussing the latest situation reports on COVID-19 in states. Alika Okbanachi Arua has more. Nigeria has recorded more than 30,000 249 confirmed cases of COVID-19 and 684 deaths. Most of these cases arise from community spread. The experiences of Delta and Oyo State gives credence to this. Oyo State is trying to make use of the um, data that um, we have 
and see how best um, we'll be able to place the state on a better state. One challenge we've had with various people is the fact that most people, once they come in, they have this denial. But as caregivers, we keep reemphasizing because once this denial sets in, there's every likelihood that this individual may not comply with the drug regimen or with our treatment protocol. On the other hand, reports from Bauchi State reveals that perception and behavioral gaps are responsible for the spike in COVID-19 cases in the states. Religious leaders, traditional rulers should please take up this challenge so that we are able to contain, contain this bad in this country. It's affecting our social life, affecting our economy, killing our particularly the elderly should know that this is not the time to move up and down. They should stay at home. But in the Federal Capital Territory, the leadership of Medical Subcommittee on COVID-19 says the mentality among Nigerians that coronavirus is not indigenous to Nigeria and cannot affect the black man is still a major challenge. It's a, it's a paradox. On one hand, when they say somebody has COVID, everybody will run away. So that means they know that there's a problem. On the other hand, people are pretending nothing is happening. And it's because of the way the disease, um, the outcome of the disease. 80% we have already seen in a place like Nigeria are completely asymptomatic. The guess, however, advocates raising the bar on sensitization and awareness campaigns across the country to check for the spread of the virus. In Abuja, Alika, Okwanachi, Arua, NT News. The federal government has integrated recommendations of the Nigeria Governors Forum Subcommittee on COVID-19 into the Nigeria Economic Sustainability Plan. Abubakar Usman Okwanga reports that the decision was taken during the 12th NGF teleconference on COVID-19 to serve as additional support for driving government's post-COVID-19 economic recovery plan. The recommendations by the Governor Nasiru Erufai led committee that was absorbed into the Nigerian Economic Sustainability Plan established in-depth knowledge on varied economic crises faced by states of the Federation occasioned by COVID-19 and offered planned suggestions on post-COVID-19 economic recovery. NGF endorsed the work of Governor Okowa's committee to consolidate measures to gradually open the former and informal sectors of the economy and also reviewed the easing of the interstate lockdown. The forum received briefing on the $100 million World Bank Regional Disease Surveillance Systems Enhancement Program to support federal government fund health facilities and mitigate measures across states of the country in the face of the global pandemic. The governors discussed new strategy adopted by presidential tax force on COVID-19 to address the spread of coronavirus pandemic with interventions to reach other targeted eye burden diseases across health centers. States resolved to increase testing for COVID-19 to curb further spread, especially among those with asymptomatic conditions and the elderly. Other top issues that dominated the 12th NGF teleconference include the report from United Nations survey on corruption, which indicated sharp decline from 32.3% to 30.2% since 2016. The forum discussed deductions from the Federation account to fund the Northeast Development Commission stamp duty collection, ownership of NMG, Executive Order 10, PENCOM, and also concord with the ideals behind the federal government gas pipeline expansion program. In Abuja, Abubakar Usman Akwanga, NTA News. <laughs> Sports now, Nigerian golfers relish possible return to action. Kene Emago DK breaks us more on sports. The latest move by the Ministry of Youth and Sports Development to restart competitive activities with individual and non-contact sports is generating reactions from golfers in the country who believe the sport complies with preventive measures of COVID-19. Professional golfers will make our ends from playing tournaments. Of course, since uh, uh, March to this point, that means nothing to take home. And of course, when you <laughs> keep when you keep drawing and you know taking from the pools and you're not replacing it, uh, before you know it, will get empty. It will dry up. It's a good move in the right direction uh, because uh, if you see every, every other part of the world. Sports like golf, tennis are beginning to be back in play. 
you know. So uh, these are sports that encourage, naturally encourage, encourage social distancing. And I think that uh, the case should not be different in our, in, in our country. The COVID-19 pandemic has continued to adversely affect major global sporting events, with this year's Ryder Cup becoming the latest to be hit on the golf calendar. Organizers say medical experts and public authorities in Wisconsin, United States, could not guarantee the safety of thousands of spectators in September. The six-team Asia Cup T20 has also been cancelled as the Pakistani Cricket Board confirms that they have agreed to host the event in 2022, while Sri Lanka is now expected to host it next year following the cancellation of this year's edition. Meanwhile, the 2020 traditional marathon and semi-marathon of Brazils will now take place in October 2021 due to the expected high number of foreign participants. Kenan Ima Abudike, NTA News. And on a sad note, President Mohamed Buhari has expressed grief over the death of Prime Minister Amadou Gon Kolebali of Cote d'Ivoire and a candidate for October's presidential election in the sister West African country. In a message of condolence to President Alassane Ouattara and the government and people of Cote d'Ivoire, President Buhari said the Prime Minister, who breathed his last in the line of duty at a cabinet meeting, left behind a void not only in his country but also in the West African sub-region, which had looked up to him as an emerging leader for the next, for the new times. And that's Nisha today. So let's take this. Thanks for watching. Take personal responsibility.